Hello and welcome again to Excelsior Trading. I'm Don Carlo, the host, and today I'm going to be reviewing a watch for you. It's my uh, Vostok Amphibia Neptune GMT. And it's kind of funny that I'm reviewing this watch at this point because this watch is a few years old and <clears throat> is currently not available other than on the secondary gray market. Usually the white dial, uh, not so much the black. The black doesn't come up as often. Um, but yeah, there's some features about this watch with a Russian in-house movement. Now, some things to talk about Vostok in general is they were commissioned by the Soviet Union back in the 1960s or so to create a dive watch. And there's a pretty big cult following for Vostok Amphibia watches. And uh, part of their goal was to make the watch affordable. Um, you know, to compete with Swiss watches. They didn't want to spend a month's salary. They wanted to spend more like a, a day or a week's salary to get a watch that could be a 200-meter dive watch. And that's what they offered. They came up with case designs that compress their own innovative designs um, and very thick acrylic crystals, which the acrylic crystal is another topic I want to talk about. Acrylic crystals are actually my favorite right after sapphire. I hate mineral crystals. Once you get a scratch on a mineral crystal, you can't get it out without professional repair. Sapphire crystals for me are bulletproof. I've never put a mark on a sapphire. But acrylic, most agree, have the most natural look to the watch. They, they have the most natural look without distortion, without coatings. Uh, the biggest gripe with acrylic is they get scratched very easily. Uh, a slight breeze could put a, a scratch on an acrylic. But to counter that, I own Cape Cod uh, cloths to clean my jewelry and whatnot. And just a few seconds with a Cape Cod cloth gets an acrylic crystal right back to crystal clear and brand new. Um, and Cape Cod cloths don't cost that much. So... If you're hesitant about getting into acrylic crystals, don't be. You can just buy a Cape Cod cloth and polish it up whenever you need to, and it looks perfectly brand new. So yeah, I'm discussing the uh, Vostok Amphibia Neptune GMT, which I'm wearing today. I love that they went with the subdial for the second hand with this mechanical movement because... Vostok uses a very low beat movement, and it's it sweeps very well when it's on a little tiny subdial. You know, it's very smooth sweep. The GMT hand is slave to the hour hand, so meaning it can't be set independently. You have to set the GMT time by rotating the bezel, which is just a friction bezel. It's not a click, so you know it. It's got a very positive thick feel to it but uh so it's not going to move on its own not by any means but i also love that it illustrates kind of a day date or or a day and nighttime feature with the gmt hand i don't know if you can see it yep there we go now i got the gmt hand in function so 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night which is pretty neat i like that and they went with a very tasteful dial, which is not very loud, which most of their watches are pretty loud, and the watch community doesn't like that. Just some basic text mentioning the uh, amphibia on the dial. They have the um, amphibia, and they have the Neptune printed at near the 6 o'clock in Russian. And then they also have... 32 jewels and made in Russia. All written in Russian. Which that I don't mind. I mean, it's part of the, the, the heritage. Now, this does come on one of their crappy steel bracelets. And that's what I was talking about, about Vostok. They're so charming. Uh, to cut costs down and keep their watches with an in-house movement so affordable, they cut several corners. One, they do not advertise. There's no advertising cost. And two, 
they come in very nondescript, cheap, um, cheap plastic boxes, and they come on the most horrible straps in the world. And most Vostoks also come very unregulated. Their, their time is way off, but they fully expect you to unscrew the case back and to tinker with it yourself. I have gotten all of my Vostoks to run plus or minus just a couple of seconds a day just by tapping the little lever on the movement with a toothpick as videos show you how to do. It's not that hard. But in a Neptune case, the Neptune is their premium line. This one actually came fairly well regulated. I didn't have to pop the case back open and monkey around with it. Uh, my standard uh, Amphibia Orange Scuba Dude and my Kamandersky, my commander, hand wind only. I, I had a monkey with both of those when they arrived. And of course I had to throw them on straps. Well, this one, when it retailed, offered that you could buy at the same time these links that would allow you to put any strap on the watch. And they also offered you this Vostok rubber strap. And let's see here. Hold it this way. It says Vostok on it in Russian. And it has this really lovely red, um, red stitching, red contrast stitching which quite clearly matches the uh, red of the bezel and the red of the GMT hand. And for the dial, they kind of went, it's a very shiny black. It looks like a lacquer finish. It might be a lacquer. So yeah, this, this model is very tasteful. It's very understated. It doesn't have a lot of flashy stuff going on. And it's very functional. It's very easy and legible to read. The uh, outer railroad track is lovely. It's all very crisp white. Let me take a look here. I'm an old man. So yeah, actually the, the indices are even applied. They're not painted on. The... Uh, our indices and the tick marks they're a silver bordered applied and it looks like a very shiny black lacquer dial i mean they did an impressive deal here now let me take a close look sure the uh, railroad track minute minutes is painted on and so is um, any of the writing of amphibia and all the rest and the same with the the subdial second hand, but also the subdial second hand has some texturing to it. It has spirals, so it kind of has. It's it's hard for my camera to pick up because I have a very cheap camera. I'm just using my laptop. I'm not that fancy. Sitting here in my living room, full of boxes with my robe. I'm not that fancy. But yeah, I just wanted to review one of my better Vostoks um, that sold out very quickly years ago. Like I said, you can get the white version, and very rarely you can get the black version on eBay. And I, I really love this rubber strap that came with it, because it, it sits very comfortably on the wrist. I've worn this at work and on trips many times. And I must say, Russians must have some seriously big fig friggin' wrists, because I go to the last hole. That's one thing I will say about this strap. But it has a keeper, and I can roll the keeper out. But it feels very comfortable on the wrist. And yeah, it's very functional. It's it's definitely my favorite Vostok, although I did pay more for it than any of the rest. Got my Navy anchor ring on, my singet ring. I like to wax seal envelopes with it. But yeah, I'll show you the case back as well, the screw down case back with the two two piece screw down. So it's got a picture of Neptune and it says Neptune in Russian, which Neptune's supposed to be their premium line of watches. Um, it's got a lot of other Russian text on the back. I probably won't be able to decipher most of it. it talks about the 200 meters of water resistance. Yeah, I don't know what the rest of it says. I don't know what the rest of it says, but it looks pretty cool with that Neptune. And like I said, I'll give you a close-up of the dial. 
Yeah. So all in all, this 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 has been this is a fun watch in my collection, and I seen. I mean, they originally retailed for just shy of a hundred bucks, maybe about the eighty buck mark. But now on the secondary market, since this is unobtainium, you can't get it retail. I mean, I've saw I've seen sales of close to two hundred dollars. And like I said, I, I think it's a real major upgrade to have it with the actual Vostok um, logoed rubber band with red contrast stitching. And they have a little little uh, B for their Vostok on the, uh, oh, what's that called? The clasp. On the clasp. So yeah, I mean, it's it's a fun watch. It's, it's very fun. Um, if you don't own any Vostoks and you're a watch collector, I really think you should. At least one of their $40, $50 Amphibia models. But like I said, expect that when it arrives, they're fully expecting that you're going to pop off the case back and regulate it yourself. They give you a very nice Russian in-house movement that you can get down to just plus or minus a couple of seconds a day if you just tap it with a toothpick. And I mean, for $40, $50 watch... You're not all that scared of damaging the movement or anything. Their point is to bring you a quality tool dive watch. So yeah, you have to regulate them yourself. They fully expect you to throw their steel hair ripper bracelet right in a trash can out of box and throw it on your favorite NATO or leather strap. They don't put it in any fancy packaging. It's the cheapest plastic box in the world. They expect you to chuck that as well. I know this is very taboo in the watch community to throw away original strap, to throw away paperwork, to throw away boxes, but the the Vostok watch, the Amphibia, is very much a tool watch. They want to give you the actual unit that could be regulated to perfection and dive to 200 meters if you need your watch to, to do that. And they wanted to bring it to you at the cheapest cost. So they skimped on bracelet. They skimped on marketing. They skimped on packaging. They skimped on regulating. They don't regulate the damn things out of packaging. Unless you get a Neptune model. Like I said, I did not have to regulate this. This is within a couple of seconds plus or minus a day. So if you spend a little more and get one of their Neptune models, even today, I'm pretty sure they probably took the time to regulate it in-house. But it's just a cool piece of history, you know, a military tool watch. Um, yeah, it, everyone that owns a watch collection should have one or two amphibias, uh, Vostoks. Um, just for the in-house Russian movement and the, the cultural horological history of the watch. Um, I'm still daily wearing... As my first video, my Tudor Royal. I'm gonna shout it out in every video. Actually, after doing this review, I'm gonna pop pop this back in my watch case and go ahead wearing my Tudor Royal again, since it's uh, really the gem of my collection. And honestly, about four days in now to wearing it, it's still only running about three seconds short of accurate world time. It's only lost three seconds, and that was the day that I didn't wear it because I went to visit my daughter, and I wore a less expensive watch in case it got drop kicked by a four-year-old. And I think because it has only a 36 or 38-hour power reserve, it started to get to the low end by the time I started fiddling with it, wearing it, and winding it again. And it dropped about three seconds in that time. But for a mechanical watch... Three seconds is well within COSC certification, and they do not certify the Royal line of watches. They don't certify it. Very nice, clean dial. Not much written there. Just the Tudor, Geneve, made in Switzerland. It's, it's just gorgeous. And it's really hard for my crappy camera to pick up, but it actually is a black sunburst dial. Which, outside of this watch, I, I don't know of a single example of a black sunburst. Eight natural diamonds, 18 karat solid gold bezel and crown. I know, I talk really at length at the end of each one of my videos. But this was my first entry-level luxury watch. So, you know, obviously I'm very romanced by it. 
and I like to give the constant updates of how well it's to keep in time. I've only set this watch the day it came out of the box, and it's only running negative three seconds right now to real time, which is pretty amazing for a mechanical watch. It's 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 better off than any other mechanical watch in my collection. And I have Seiko's, I have Orion, I have Hamilton, I have Tissot, I have many mid-level. And that's another video I want to do shortly for you, is what luxury actually means. What, what, what differentiates mid-level to luxury? And a big shock to me was not much. I get a lot of luxury bang for the buck out of mid-level watches, I really do. I love all those aforesaid watches. I was afraid that when this watch came, I was going to feel different about the rest of my collection. Maybe I'll unload most of it since most of it's selling well above what I originally paid for at retail. But honestly, mid-level watches that are four, five, six hundred dollars nowadays really do have a lot of luxury value. They offer you a lot of luxury features just like a luxury watch. And, you know, I, I, I don't feel any different about them. I, I still feel like the day I bought them wow, when I took them out of the package. Honestly, like I said, this is a, a three to $4,000 retail watch, you know, depending on what discount you can get. And this one retailed for under $100. It was under 100 originally, maybe a few extra bucks for the rubber strap. And now even on the secondary market, I've seen two of these sell in the last several months for about $180, which is still a good value for a Russian in-house movement GMT in a model you're not going to get anywhere else. But, you know, horologically, I love each watch for um, what it features, what it, what it features, you know, between Swish, between what Japan's doing, I... I don't have a German watch in my collection. I definitely want a German watch in my collection. And actually, I just I just blew another $1,000 on a Seiko. I have a Seiko Alphanist uh, that's coming soon. It's their new uh, limited edition, only sold in their boutique in the UK with a green dial. I have that coming. And I'll likely review that watch as well. But that's, you know, going back to my roots of um, mid-level watches. I, I'm a working man. I don't have tens of thousands of dollars. That's why I really settled on the, uh, the Tudor Royale to be my entry-level luxury watch. Coming in, I got a hell of a deal on it. I was willing to spend four grand for the all Roman, Roman numeral dial, but I ended up that fell through because it sold out. These are selling out. If you want a Tudor Royal, you better buy one. And you better make up your mind soon. Because they are selling out like hotcakes. That sale fell through. My $4,000 got refunded instantly. And I went on JAMA Shop. And I found this one with the diamonds. And honestly, I'm happier because they had a 25% off retail so I only spent three thousand, a little over three thousand, which is under retail for this watch, and it's only going to go up, especially once you can't get them. And I think that obviously right now the winner, if you watch all the reviews, is the all steel, all stainless steel blue dial sunburst is the winner. But I honestly think that this one is going to be the even bigger winner in. 5, 10, 20 years to come because this has all the bells and whistles. It has diamonds. It has solid 18 karat gold bezel, solid 18 karat gold crown. It has a thick 18 karat gold capping on the inner links, which like I said in all my videos, I've gotten in there with a jeweler's loop and it's about a half millimeter thick all the way around the steel on the links. So re no matter what you ever scratch them with, you're never going to get down to base steel. They have so much gold wrapped around every link. It, it really is. It really exudes luxury. And yeah, I, you know, I want a one and done watch, uh, a watch that has a day date. I love day dates. I, when we get into my further collection, my watch collection, you'll see a lot of my watches have day dates being my Orients, 
my Hamilton Khaki King, they all have day date. My Tissot has day date. A lot of watches I prefer to have day date because I'm an old man. I get befuddled in the brain while I'm working. I like to glance at my wrist and see the day and the date. I really enjoy that. So when I want a one and done luxury watch, I, I was shooting for the fence for day date, sapphire crystal, screw down crown, an element of luxury. And most reviewers have said, this is the crossover sport and dress watch. So it's equally as fine in jeans and a t-shirt, which I wear most days when I'm not in my house robe, when I actually have to go out somewhere. Or in the summer, my shorts and a t-shirt are going to the beach. You can take this on vacation. You can go to the beach. But it also equally looks stunning in my scrubs at the hospital, working side by side with nurses and doctors. And you can dress it up in a suit, go to a wedding or a function. So this really, for me, covers all the bases. This rounds out my collection, and it's the crowning jewel of my collection. It's the number one watch. And someday, I don't know, maybe I'll have a day date from a higher maker. Maybe I'll feel differently. Maybe this will appreciate in value, double in value, and I'll sell it. Um, not likely, because I really do love this watch, and being my first entry level into luxury watches, I will probably keep it in my collection for a lifetime. I probably, I probably will not let it go. But yeah, we're running kind of long here like we do. We're over 20 minutes, and we're reviewing the Vostok Amphibia Neptune GMT. There's a tongue twister for you. And yeah. I have a lot of feeling, even for this watch, as opposed to a $3,000 Tudor. I mean, you can get bang for your buck for under $100. If you go check out Vostok's website, something I will stay, say to steer clear of is stay to the horological history. Stay to the original amphibias and Vostoks and Neptunes. They have a whole nother line that they make in another country out of like sapphire crystals and stuff where they throw their movement in it, but it's made in an entirely different country. I, I don't think the money's there with those watch. I do own one of them, actually. I do. I'll have to review that sometime. I do own one of them, but the fun of owning a Vostok is owning a bit of that 1960s heritage, that in-house movement, acrylic crystal, chrome, very thickly chrome-plated brass, um case construction you know it's just it's just a value for the money for an in-house movement you can't get a 200 meter in-house dive watch movement automatic watch for under 50 dollars vostok is still leading the market in that way and that's why there's so many vostok fans so anyway i hope you've enjoyed seeing my vostok neptune Maybe I'll review my Vostok Amphibia and my Kamandersky models in the future. Or maybe even that other model I was talking about, which is all banged up with bells and whistles and sapphire crystals made in another country. It's not made in Russia. I can't remember what country off the top of my head they, they made them in. Somewhere else in Europe, and they just sent the Vostok movement to be put into the watch. But I think that one is the gas limo or something the gas limo but we'll get into that in a future review so it's been fun as always i hope you enjoy my videos um i don't ever ask people to subscribe or hit the bell notification because i find that so lame on youtube everyone knows to do it if they want to see the content of a producer i'm never going to say that but you know what i will say if you watch this leave me a comment any comment. I, I haven't yet had a comment on my videos, and I've made about five or six review videos. I would like a comment. I'd like a little back and forth dialogue. Uh, so yeah, if you enjoyed this video, you know, give me the thumbs up and leave a comment. And if you want to see more content from me, you've, you've been on YouTube long enough. You know what to do. 
So I am signing out, coming in at the 25-minute mark. I'm Don Carlo. I'm in the Berkshires, Massachusetts, and I named my channel Excelsior Trading because that's what I am on eBay as a dealer for about 20 years, Excelsior Trading. Have a great afternoon. Enjoy your day, guys. Keep buying watches.